Hi, I'm Bruce, and I want to thank you for joining us on Romantic Cooking. This is going to be a series that's going to give you some information, fun facts and recipes, and ideas all relating to romance cooking, and hopefully you'll lose, use this information in your everyday life to make your life more enjoyable and more enjoyable for your significant other. Now, we are just winging it as we go here. There's no real script. There's no real rehearsing. What we did was I wrote down some ideas here uh, on the paper that I'm going to read to you, and then we're going to go into the kitchen and cook some great food. So let me get started here. You know, uh, I work in the service industry, and I have for a very long time. And what I've noticed when I'm at work is when people go out, they just don't relate to each other anymore. They sit there. They look in a different direction, they're on their phone, they're just kind of in their own world and they're really not paying attention to each other. Not all couples, you know, but, but most couples, I mean, they're just not engaging. You know, in today's world, I think we can all relate to the fact that it's just not easy. I think we all know that, you know, with all this outside pressure from bills, kids, your job, so much more, life can just bury you if you really let it. And what happens is you lose track of that person that you started this whole thing with. That's right. I'm not talking about your friends. I'm talking about the other person that you connected with, whoever that person is to you. You don't mean for this to happen. You don't even realize that it happens, but it just does. Believe me, it just does. Those special moments, those special conversations that mean so much, they're gone. Can you relate to this? You come home from work, you put the kids to bed, or you cook dinner and you put the kids to bed. You're on the computer. Your significant other's on the PlayStation or on the phone. Time to go to bed, you wake up, you do the whole thing over and over again the next day and over and over and over. Now I wanna tell you, I am by far not perfect. I'm just like you, I'm in a relationship. I deal with the same issues that you do. So I came up with the idea of romantic cooking, not only to inspire you, but also to inspire me and together, we're gonna get back to the place we started at, that real happy place. I'm gonna give you some ideas to put romance back in your lives and give you some easy to make fun recipes of, for some great tasting food. All right, you ready? Now we're gonna get started. First of all, I looked up the, ro the definition of romance and romantic. And romantic, it says, is conductive to or characterized by the expression of love. An example of this might be a candlelight dinner, a romantic view of the past. A simple definition of romantic is relating to or involving love between two people, making someone think of love suitable for romance, thinking about love and doing and saying things to show you love someone. So now you know what it is to be romantic. Well, do we really know that yet? I don't know. I looked up what romance means, and the definition is a feeling of excitement and mystery associated with love. Ooh. A quality or feeling of mystery, excitement, and remoteness from everyday life. The beauty of romance of the night. I don't know what any of that means, but that's what it says. Some terms we use that we can relate to, mystery, glamour, excitement, mystique. Do you get any of that when you think of romance? I don't know if I do or not. What about this? In the old days, they used to use the word court. The wealthy estate owner romanced or courted her. Some words that we might be familiar with, you know, chase, pursue, seduce, date. Can you relate to any of that stuff? So romance is a feeling of excitement and romantic is relating to or involving love between two people. Put them together and what do we get? When you're in love, you feel excited or you're excited when you feel love that you can relate to another person. I still don't get it. Well, follow me. Follow me. Check this out. If you're a guy, you meet someone, you start out talking, you go on a date, you know, movie or dinner. Possibly you start out having some drinks. That really helps. Or unless you're one of those guys who you think it's impressive to go on a date, especially on that first date and you drink so much you become a speech slurring, no nonsense, making loud mouth fool yourself. And then you try to talk to the girl that you wanted to impress and you wonder why she's not answering your phone calls. That's never happened to me normally because I wait till the third date to do that. 
No, I'm only kidding. Uh, and if you're a girl and you meet someone, you meet a guy, you go on a date, it goes great, second date goes better. And then for some unknown reason, some out of this world reason that nobody can explain, you say something like, I've really thought about us moving in together or on the second date you said, you know, I think I'm falling in love with you. And you wonder why the guy never calls you back. Now, maybe these things have worked for you. Some, maybe if they've worked for some people and that's okay, but keep watching. Because if you're in a relationship and you're not getting those goodbye hugs in the morning, or you don't hear any more I love yous, or there's no more kisses goodbye in the morning, keep watching. We're gonna touch on all these things during romantic, our romantic cooking series. So before we get started in the kitchen, I wanna give you some fun facts about romance and being romantic. Romantic fact number one, hugs can make you live longer. Did you know that? So get more hugs in your life. Hugs that last 20 seconds or more can lower your heart rate. Romantic fact number two, love can make you measurably more trusting. Romantic fact number three, men fall in love faster than women. I'm not too sure about that one. We're going to have to research that one a little more. And lastly, I thought this one was really interesting. The initial attraction isn't everything. A survey of 5,000 men and women said that they fell in love with people they didn't feel attracted to. They said attraction came after engaging in conversation and shared interest. So that means guys learn how to talk to women a little nicer. Maybe they'll like you no matter what you look like. Uh, a couple more facts. The oldest love song was written over 4,000 years ago. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. And uh, the last one is, oh, I thought this was pretty funny. A man, a man's beard grows faster when he's anticipating fooling around with his girlfriend or wife. Now, I'm gonna give you a word of advice. Women, if you wake up in the morning and you see your man shaving, and he comes home at five o'clock and he has a full beard, watch out. So we're gonna head into the kitchen right now. So I'm gonna have our camera person, who's my lovely daughter, pan over into the kitchen as I get up. Pan over into the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. I have my cooking attire on. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to use some simple ingredients two different ways to make two different dishes. We're gonna make some bruschetta and then we're gonna make some pomodoro in a minute. So we're gonna start with the bruschetta. What I did was I took seven Roma tomatoes and I cut them up and I put them in here and for the sake of time, I'm only gonna cook, cut one tomato and show you how to do it and put it in the bowl with the rest of them. So what we did was we took a Roma tomato and I have a fun cooking tip for you, cooking tip. When you're cooking peppers, cutting peppers or tomatoes, you wanna use a serrated knife. It cuts them a lot easier. So what we're gonna do, come over here and get a close up of this. We're gonna take the tomato, we're gonna to trim it, the, the root side off, turn it upside down, very simple. We're gonna cut the tomato in half. We're gonna cut it in strips. And then we're gonna just cut it in pieces and you wanna make sure the pieces aren't too big because you want it to fit on the bread. And you wanna tuck those fingers in. Here we go again, we're gonna cut it in strips. I'm gonna I'll get one more in there. Turn it, watch your fingers, cut it in small pieces. All right, we have our tomato pieces. This little tool right here, great little tool in the kitchen. It's like a little scraper. Boom, into the pan we go. Now we're gonna take some fresh basil or basil, depending on how you pronounce it. I say basil. Oops. And we're gonna take a couple pieces. Now you gotta get in close again on this one. We're gonna take our basil and we're just gonna roll it up like so. And then we're just gonna cut our little chiffonade again with our little serrated knife. And we're gonna take our basil throw it in there. I've already put a clove and a half of garlic in there. I'm gonna do one piece of cheese for you. We're gonna take our mozzarella, or mozzarella, as they say on TV, and we're gonna cut a piece out. 
So here's our mozzarella cheese. We're gonna slice it up, cut it into little pieces. Again, we're gonna cut it into pieces small enough to fit on the bread. All right, okay. So, we're gonna put it in there. Oh, where's our little, little scraper at? All right, we're gonna mix it together. And so now our bruschetta is almost ready to go. I did one other thing here. Come into the kitchen here. Come with me. This is some balsamic vinegar, about a cup and a half or so, that we added a little bit of brown sugar to, and we cook it down until it's this thick, syrupy goodness. This is so sweet, and you don't have to use expensive balsamic vinegar. You can use any balsamic vinegar that you like. Cook it down till it's nice and thick. Now on our plate here, I have a little bit of, I use baguette bread, cut it into little pieces. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bruschetta, can you see this over here? We're gonna put it on our bread, like so. Put it on our plate. Take our bread. We're gonna put it on our plate. We're gonna just do four of these for now. Oh. We're really cooking here. Put it on our plate. And the last one. Put it on our plate. Now, we have our bruschetta on our plate, all right? What I'm gonna do is grab some of that balsamic reduction, all right? This beautiful stuff right here, and we're just gonna drizzle it over the top of each individual piece. And believe me, when you taste this, you're gonna love it. And then we're just gonna take a little bit and just kind of do around the plate and make it look all fancy. Now, that's our first dish. Put it over here so you can see it. That's our bruschetta with a balsamic reduction. Try it, you're really gonna love it. Now, for our second dish, we're gonna take our pan and we're gonna get it going nice and hot. And what we're gonna do is we are going to take our bruschetta and we're going to put it in this pan just long enough to break it down, maybe three, five minutes real quick. I'm going to put some in there right now. And we're going to let that heat up. And while that's heating up, I pre-cooked some chicken breast that I have here. And we're going to take our lovely chicken breast. And we're just going to slice it up on the bias, like this. Alright. There's our chicken. It's falling apart on us. There. There's our chicken. We're going to take our... Okay, so what I did was I took our bruschetta, I put it in the pan, I heated it up, I added some noodles, I used penne because my daughter happens to love penne, and then I plated it over here with our chicken, and then again, we're just going to take our little balsamic reduction because this stuff is really, really good, and we're just going to drizzle it over and around the plate, and that's how we're going to finish our dish. So here, we're going to bring them to the table. We have our beautiful bruschetta appetizer on baguette bread with our balsamic reduction. And here we have our chicken with our pomodoro, same ingredients, garlic, basil, cheese, olive oil, salt, pepper, with chicken. Now you could use fish, you could use pork, you can use steak, you could use whatever you want. And I'm going to finish with this thought. If you've been watching the show with your significant other, I want you to grab a glass of wine or anything that you'd like, raise it up and look each other in the eye and say, here's to you. And I thank you for watching our first show, Romantic Cooking. We'll see you next week.